How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of Fox Farm up in this piece. This bottle opener's pissing me off. Take, make it too much noise. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're back with a little bit of Fox Farm up in this piece in the form of a wood line. Yeah, this is an oatmeal stout. Coming in at 8.3% alcohol by volume, done and done. This was canned on the 11th of November, so it's about a month and a half old. I think an 8% oatmeal stout would be fine. <laughs> Even an hazy IPA should be fine that long. I am making fun. And it's from the from the people that do the 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 soils come the spoils kind of goodness, yeah. We're drinking this shit. This comes courtesy of my boy Oak Ridge. He actually went to Fox Farm for the first time. He came back, and he gave me a bunch of awesome beers. Because they're Fox Farm, I am biased because their stuff is usually awesome. And honestly, always dig the labels. Beer looks like it should. 8.3. 8.3% oatmeal stout. When's the last time you saw a brewery make start sentence, oatmeal stout, end sentence, or end phrase? Like, it's usually like a coffee oatmeal stout, or bourbon barrel aged co uh, coffee, or oatmeal stout, or, you know, a vanilla rum raisin, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's one of the reasons why I love Fox Farm so much. It's just, it's a fucking oatmeal stout. They're like, I want to make a fucking oatmeal stout. We're making a fucking oatmeal stout. <sighs> anyway, looks the part of an oatmeal stout. Rich, dark, brown, a little bit of mahogany tones. I mean, that is above malted malt ball color, but just a skosh below where I like my coffee to look. So right around that area. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks the part of a nice big old stout. I mean, mmm, mmm, let's get a nose. It smells like a nice old school oatmeal stout. And by that, I mean, there's not a ton to it. It's a sweetness to it. Multiple levels of chocolate leaning into the bittering side of chocolate, that non sweetened kind of chocolate. There's a little bit of kind of grainy, I'll call it oat vibes just because the can says it's oatmeal stout, so I'll say oatmeal. Um, and there's a bittering to it. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's not over the top. It's not a two by four to the face of anything crazy. It just smells like an oatmeal stout. I say that with reverence. I say that with appreciation. That is not a negative going on. Oh, puny nose on it must suck. No. 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 Let's dive in. Cheers. That's good. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say this is like blowing my doors off. And it's like some next level shit. That is just unheard of, and I'm, I'm tweaking my brains, going fucking crazy. But it's fucking delicious. Very delicious. A little wax from a bottle I opened the other day. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, that chocolate, like I said, leaning heavily into the undersweetened, kind of bittering baker's chocolate, kind of multiple levels of that. This really soft, kind of oatmeal mouthfeel. But very much oatmeal, and not this new school kind of like jack it up with lactose and 19 other things to give this super sultry kind of crazy mouthfeel. It's old school creamy mouthfeel in a very fun way. And, and like I said, that roast is meaningful. I, the roast and bittering is meaningful. You get a nice bittering for both the roasted malt and some hops. And you have this nice toasty roastiness and a toasted roasty malt. Not a coffee, not an espresso. It's malt. I mean, it's just... Which is a, it looks like a half moon in there right now. It's real pretty. I wish I could take a picture. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is just really tasty stuff, to be perfectly honest with you. Drinks, like 8.3%. None of that metallic astringency I get on um, darker beers, especially the lower you get, the more prevalent it can be. Just the, the, the beautiful balance between how sweet and soft it gets, but how roasty and how bittering it gets. None of them get out of control. None of them get too heavy handed. While the roast and the toast and the bittering of that side is probably bigger than the sweetness of the beer, it's a close call. Um, and that's where I think that funness of this style and the funness of this beer in general just makes it really delicious and a really, really, really damn tasty beer. Like I said, you know, we're, we're, let's cut to the chase because it's really, I mean, I've explained the, the beer completely. It's There's not much, it's the roasty toastiness with the bittering, which play together 
super fun the oaty kind of creamy kind of pseudo subtle lactose oat vibe it's not lactose but it's a kind of lactose-esque kind of vibe you get with a heavily oated beer with that sweetness and then the mouthfeel and how it all works it, it, it's it's textbook classic oatmeal stout in the most beautiful way possible is it one of the better ones that i have had as of late it defaults to number one because i don't remember the last time i had an oatmeal stout you know but if we were to stretch that experience that mount rushmore over years it's still going to be up there it's going to be the best one i've ever had in my life i don't think so um i mean it's hard call to make over such a long period of of drinking and thinking about beers but it's worthy of being in that conversation. So let's let's kind of cap that there. Um, value and availability, no idea. Uh, people that exist in the Fox Farm universe, let me know what's what, and leave you with if you like what we like this. You gotta appreciate beer, you know, old school beer. And I don't mean that you can't like new school beer. That's not what I'm saying. But like, if you go into this like oatmeal, st- oh, how do I explain this? And I'm not, I'm not saying this as being like a douche or I'm trying to like kind of belittle people, but like, there's a large section of people that go, Hey, I got a big oatmeal stat. You want some? And they go, yes. And they're not, they don't know what that is. You know, like they expect there to be candy bars and maple syrup and all kinds of shit in there. That's when they think of oatmeal stout. It's not like they just don't like base oatmeal stouts. It is, it, they don't understand it. You know what I mean? They don't be like, wait a minute, you have a beer that's just four things, you know, four ingredients, and it's a stout, like an oatmeal stout. Like, I don't understand, like, what you're talking about. Like, that's supposed to have marshmallow peeps. And fucking like doubloons in it, isn't it? You know, and and that's real. That's a thing. So it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I'm not gonna say if you like oatmeal stout, you'll like this because people will construe that as pastry, you know, just because that's what people know and that's how the world is today. Um, so you gotta appreciate the old school and 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 and, and dig on simple. And I again, I say that with reverence. I say that in a positive way. Simple is a good thing, and you have to appreciate that. Uh, and you have to appreciate, and it kind of goes hand in hand in hand with that. But I'll I'll kind of go a little deeper on it. You have to appreciate the greatness of subtlety. I don't think this is a subtle beer, but against those other beers, it's quite subtle. And just because something is louder and has and screams and is just that two by four to the face I talk about. If just because that doesn't exist in the beer doesn't mean it's not good. Volume is not the only thing that makes a beer good. Everything cranked to the max is not, that's not the goal. It may seem like that with a lot of breweries out there. It's not the goal in the end game for a lot of beers and a lot of breweries, but it seems like that's where a lot of people kind of look towards like that's the kind of that's the that's the that's the grading scale in which they kind of look at breweries and that's not gonna there this is not gonna win that um that that contest if it's it's based slowly uh, solely on who yells the loudest this isn't gonna win um you know quality over quantity i guess you could say um but if you appreciate old school beer you like a um, epically well constructed um core four beer you're gonna love this so there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massif if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of Fox Farm right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers.